of throttled. Um, trying to bring this study of civilization and its discontents, the modernity of Marx and Freud as uh, largely saying, um, stating, implying civilization is corrupting and exploitative um, to a certain extent with their, unlike Rousseau who said the same, which there was a, a, a romantic return back to natural states with him. Um, uh, Immanuel Kant um, uh, trying to carve out a new culture of, of ethics, metaphysics, and law with meaning in the face of uh, positivism and materialism and this kind of watchmaker's idea that we can reduce ourselves down to a machine. Uh, Marx and Freud, yes, civilization is a machine. The biggest challenge to that the only challenge, very kind of their nascent romanticism, is love, the construction of love. Zygmunt Bauman, Giddens, Ulrich Beck, to a certain extent, Paglia, to a certain extent, Illus, putting them all together, they would hate this. Um, and um, this is Giddens, uh, romantic love, attraction, binding, everlasting, forever. Uh, uh, we'll get to Esther Perel on this as the new guru of. of complex polyamories, um, presumes general subjugation of women, yes, Madame Bovary, um, great um, novel documenting the petite bourgeoisie, the bourgeoisie um, eyes wide shut, the movie was from a schnitzler um, novella, I believe, or a play uh, about the petite bourgeoisie trying to crack through the barriers of romantic love as a liberatory aspect after their hard work studying to be a doctor and so forth. Um, it should be sublime, can't be sublime, that's, that's ideal. Influenced by social structure and fictionalized, special person forever. Did there ever exist such a thing? Precursor to confluent love. Confluent love is Giddens' notion on the right there, confluent love uh, contingent on individual will, will, swipe, 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 uh, mutual disclosure and intimacy, always not so open, presumes equality, yes, but the equality of the internet, unlike as a central project of micro-modernity, which leads to these tiny little rabbit holes of a snowflake modernity. If you take Bauman's notion of micro-modernity, you can arrive, with his inclusion of the internet, arrive at these feedback loops of snowflake modernity. Presumes equality, but everyone is equal, right? Yes, we're all equal on the little cell phones. Rational, uh, satisficing, maximizing, we talked uh, about in the earlier lecture. Influenced by individual autonomy and self-development. Yes, it's not like we have all this time in the gig economy, but while we're on the subway or behind the urinal or whatever we're doing, we're distracted and swiping. We're always looking at our messages as that liminal space, which the liminality, the joke is that the analog self becomes the liminal space, the space in between. And our dopamine rush, our valiant romantic fight against civilization, read um, authority, read authority as container, mitigator of violence, um, uh, implied violence. Influenced by individual autonomy, a special relationship um, to be remembered, not the special person. Did you travel with this person? Was it wonderful? What do you remember of this? But does life become more than a compendium of memories, photographs? Hence the importance of things like Instagram uh, and the culture of the selfies. Preferred realization of democratic equalities. Yes. Um, getting out of there. Uh, triangular love, we talked about that. Uh, intimacy is a double-edged phenomenon. Empirical tests of Giddens' theory on intimacy and sexual relationships. Okay micromodernists like Bauman, like Illus, post-Marxists, like um, even to an extent Camille Paglia, I'm talking about her version of 
lipstick feminism, uh, non-misandropy, the inclusion of a study of neuroendocrinology, biology, in the development of narratives rather than simply the word games of, of restructuring like the semiotic square and so forth. Um, in Giddens book I read Transformation of Intimacy what causes a change, what are the consequences again and again what does this have to do with cities? Cities are equal in this series of lectures cities equal civilization. Civilization according to Marx and Freud are exploitative. Some of the good reasons why they are is to downplay contain violence. You take this hominid, put it in the ant heap, this is an unnatural situation. As Shakespeare is always talking about nature, nurture, natural, unnatural in his plays. We talk about um, the, uh, the fatalist object of civilization, the thanatic, taking the natural eros, libido, and turning it into both um, uh, authority of the superego, which must contain violence and guilt and so forth, creates guilt, but also the thanatic response, which is less so the death impulse and more so I am complete, I am done, this is it, the project's over. Civilization does not like that. Um, so here again, it's a pressure cooker. It's a, it's a something that needs to be brought, brought to a boiling uh, place. Giddens talks about pure relationship, this rational thing, very Anglo. Okay, if we just spread our cards out, we could understand this thing and cause less pain. Uh, the romantic response is, no, the analog body is ascendant. The project of modernity always eludes, we will always have pain. Why does love, why love hurts? Uh, uh, interplay of this modernist project of love against the corrupting uh, coercive um, uh, uh, exploitative features of modern of civilization read the city as central object of modernism nature COVID came out of nature devastated um, risk culture um, so the love comes out of nowhere could destroy many a person uh, bring them to the the edge of helplessness uh, remove whatever built sense of property they had uh, their faith in this sort of rationalist approach can be destroyed by love um, affairs uh, disruption of the norm disruption of ritual and so forth, the normal chaos of love in the absence of old norm, love presents as the answer, a cycle of hoping, regretting, trying again, illuse. Um, but according to Luz and kind of a structuralist post-Marxist view, it will always hurt, post-Freudian. Um, uh, these are too pes pessimistic. People are still tied in shared memories, meaning constituent constitutive traditions, i.e. exhibit connectedness, looking on and going on to connectedness. Um, uh, relationships are free to exist based on sex and intimacy rather than procreation, thanks to contraceptive. The advents of first wave feminism was 19th century, second Friedan and de Beauvoir countering the Levitown uh, Eisenhower America ideal. Uh, third wave, Steinem, uh, even Andrea Dworkin, uh, kind of this, let's just call it perhaps a Maoist approach, um, and then fourth wave lipstick feminism as Paglia embodies, we got fifth, sixth, who knows. Um, at this point, the advent of feminism has given women greater opportunities in educational work and thus has provided them greater independence. Uh, in the past, most dangers were natural earthquakes. Today, more dangers are manufactured risks resulting from human activity, read civilization and its exploitation. Moving on, types, structures of love. Out of these noting general things such as urbanism equals civilization, what are 
would have our major theorists, right or wrong, they are subject to debate. Freud, in Civilization and Its Discontent, talk about the natural freedom of the id and the ego, counterpoise against superego and violence, particularly in the condensation, the condensed spaces of um, the city. Wheel theory of development of love, rapport, self-revelation, uh, mutual dependency, personality, need fulfilled. Again, I love these graphs just as debatable objects. Ecstasy, grief, loathing, amazement, terror, adoration. Who, who pinpoints these words? It's, it's pretty funny. Internet's filled with these. Pinterest is filled with these. We go into... Um, Notions of grief, uh, Kubler-Ross, uh, three or four years ago, we programmed some AI to respond to the narratives of this Kubler-Ross stages of grief. When the object of love, capacity for love, is removed, we have grief. And this is one of the most devastating features of modernity in that um, we have that in-place notion of civilization as an exploitative form, according to, to Freud. Therefore, what does our grief look like? Comic, this is the individual's expression of grief. Kubler-Ross cycle, uh, when the object of love dies, goes away, leaves, departs out of the time of the individual, the creation of the dyad, the, the, the welding of the prisoner's dilemma against the corrupting influences of civilization. Aziz Ansari was uh, kind of an amusing pop culture book uh, with sociological facts and how people, mostly men, um, uh, and a person coming from a South Asian traditional culture of arranged marriages, what, what are the new styles and how does uh, people, as a medium, it's safe to say texting facilitates flakiness and rudeness and many other personality traits that would not be expressed in a phone call or in-person interaction. Um, texting, uh, phatic communication, meaning simply made for the contact of the message alone with no other message other than to make contact. Um, the phatic relationship created by texting and texting amongst intimates is an interesting aspect of micro modernity no message implied there's no dating service on this planet planet that can do what the human brain called to do in terms of finding the right person okay furthermore where do we find it online uh further 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 um uh the structure of the dyad and longer relationship, whereas the passionate decreases, the compassionate is um, extended through built memories, built, read romantic um, projects against civilization. There's no need for bureaucracies or coercion or corruption if the dyad has been compassionately constructed over time. And again, I'm trying to pull the juice out of this, the, the juicy bits such as pure desire and immersiveness and talk about the structures left around it, which is the abiding structure left in cities as condensed spaces and as we look at the city as a condensation of the central project of, of civilization. Uh, up and down, danger points in the initial intensity of the passion, the peaks, the hills, the, the constant intimacy, the immersion one does with another, leaving, as Freud said, you leave, you attend, you apply your family romance on the other. Um, the danger points within that to, to uh, uh, cut bait, um, Swim, leave, ghost, whatever the, the, the new um, words of it for it are. Intensity over time and intensity wanes. And we see this gradual building of compassion um, documented. Uh, married, we still have these. Okay, 
Freud, what is the con the construction of the pleasure principle? In his book, Beyond the Pleasure Principle, he talks about it as the self valiantly trying to construct something within this more or less um, uh, coercive, exploitative world of, of the city, of civilization, of armies, wars, um, uh, markets, uh, famines, um, nature, as it were. Uh, and here it is, married or in civil domestic partnership is great greater degree of happiness um, and kind of the slump in the middle of the middle middle age um, are is your spouse your BFF um, Ava per, uh, um, uh, Esther Perel um, goes counter to this your your spouse is your partner should not be your best friend because the mysteries are let's try and quickly get into a couple of the Perel quotes state of affairs, um, typical high-risk couple, couples interaction, unstable marriage, um, moving down, the notions of infidelities, uh, here she is, um, uh, kind of engaging lectures, engaging TED Talks, um, viewed by millions, um, kind of a voice helping persons with the internet in the city out of this fog, this jungle of traditionalism, romantic approaches to countering the coercive aspects of civilization. So she's a little bit of a po of post-Freudian, taking Freud in account, mating in captivity. You read the book, talks about the dynamics of mystery. The very ingredients that nurture love, mature uh, mutuality, rep reciprocity, Protection, worry, responsibility for the other are sometimes the very ingredients that stifle desire. She, in a very non-romantic way, in a very structural way, wants to re-include desire with a capital D, a practical, applicable thing, back into maybe, hopefully, a monogamous bonds. We see that. Again, the bricks of the city, the dyad, what is the growth? Love as a project of urban modernity, um, fragility of cities, um, uh, crushing influences by both nature and, we're all going to die, nature and civilization. We can mitigate aspects. We created civilization as the cities to forge greater happiness. Often it leads to less happiness particularly as Neo-Rousseauians look back at native peoples, uh, so-called primitive peoples, enjoying or seeming more happy. On some level, we trade passion for security. That's trading one illusion for another. Both, she says, are illusory. It's a matter of degree. We can't live in a constant fear. We can't live without any. The fear of loss is essential to love. Kubler-Ross, how do we go through this? Um, should point out the fact that cities, certainly plague cities, and I worked on this Boccaccio project, which is again a famous 500 year old dialogue on what young people filled with desire do in plague times, in the bubonic plague of Renaissance. One of the founding literary works of the West is Boccaccio's Decameron, Stories of Love. Stories as love as plumage, stories of love as seduction, stories of love as constructing individual choice. Contra civilization, which is providing no answers against nature, let's go to the villa in Fiesoli and tell these stories and hope um, we can um, uh, make the love with these five women and five men. So their stories are counterpoised contrasting each other. It worked on this piece to greater or lesser effect uh, with stories from individuals during the time of COVID. Similar things. Uh, construction of something such as love to bulwark yourself against civilization and its inadequacy as we felt in the assuring dialogues with Governor Cuomo and then soon 
they lost their steam as to provide us with comfort. And love is a bulwark against nature. We, we all, as we saw in two, three lecture go, lectures ago, symbolic exchange and death by Baudrillard, that death is this sequestered thing. In the time of COVID, 1,200 people were dying. Uh, the images of Potter's Field with just rows of wooden coffins filling up. Um, what do you do in downtown Florence during the Black Plague when stacks of bodies are around you? You're a beautiful young man or woman. You're looking at five others, cisgender people, saying, let's head in the hills. The ladies say, it's not that simple. We're not going to subscribe to Carpe Diem, but, but tell us stories. Work for it. Um, so we have this pleasant outgrowth um, in the form of the camera. Quality of our relationships determines the quality of our lives. It is central. It is central to the city, I contend, as perhaps your only project after providing for your material existence, bulwarking yourself against the future in a 401k, perhaps even a partner. Seeing that devastated after you lose a partner to which you have built these things, to which perhaps desire under various terms has gone away. Um, I love you, I love the concept of you, great. Um, um, some interest, here's one of the central distillations from her many books and a bunch of talks. We are asking one person to give us what an entire village once used to provide. Central. Um, are we a beautiful little Swiss army knife to one other person. This is proven to be too ideal, so we go into other permutations. Uh, desire needs space. Um, space is what it didn't have under COVID, when a couple would go upstate with their perfect Zoom world, with no commute, um, enough pasta to last forever, putting on the COVID-19. Um, and they discovered maybe not their love, but their desire needed greater space. Um, certain counter aspects happen, um, and I know personally many relationships ended during COVID, um, uh, uh, confined ones and not so confined ones. Um, we see uh, we see her view, view of maybe, well, let's call it a European view that the mysteries of desire are essential ingredient to this construction of love that maybe like a Neo-Freudian, there'll never be a perfect silver bullet against the exploitative features of civilization. So don't beat yourself up trying. Um, there's something very full in knowing that your partner accepts you as is today. Monogamy is one person at a time rather than one person for 40, 50 years. Um, uh, interesting little quotes. Uh, once a cheater, always a cheater. Uh, um, yes, it leads into other permutation. Um, it's no longer free expression or loyalty. Okay, so here's another. So, dyads in the city, how do you remain this way amongst all the influences in the city? Trouble looms when monogamy is no longer free expression of loyalty, but a form of enforced compliance. Bauman, uh, Giddens, uh, Ulrich Beck, use your rationality. Use your mind against both civilization and nature in kind of like this frying pan of the city. She is saying... Um, it's enforced compliance, um, corrupting civilization, that you need this wild aspect of desire, not quite chaotic, but part of the construction of, of love. Um, moving on, all these little permutations of how to do that, uh, love, sex, friendship, perfection, what, you know, I, I love the d uh, dogmatism of these little graphs as they explain it and they're their little geometries of, okay, how do you do that? How do you break down the engine of doing that while maintaining desire, 
while maintaining the cell phone in your pocket while living in the city, not as, you know, some peasant couple out in the middle of the cornfields. What, what aspects of this variation uh, happens? The Pinterest and the internet is filled with these permutations. Um, Emma Goldman, uh, uh, the mother of open marriage and so forth on a communist standpoint over a hundred years ago, um, fell deeply in love. Um, uh, so this is interesting, sort of countering to her Marxist uh, rational project out of the, the corrupting values of, of the... Um, um, uh, relationship, a bunch of funny cartoons on on um, what the contradictions, this very extended periodic table of polycules. I never knew these things existed. Again, like the human mind, maybe the um, rationalist mind, read micro-modernity of Giddens Beck. Oh, given this, how do we get out of it? This is a funny little chart of making all these, I mean, the seems like any adherence to these charts would naturally turn you off. Um, the further, further, further. Tons of these complicated charts. I don't know where you would place yourself within these things. Um, is this empowering? Is this enslaving? Is this a corruption of civilization that wants to make a sense of all this nonsensical feelings, this desire that she talks about, Eluz talks about love as, as a countervailing feature to civilization, certainly Freud and Marx does, Nietzsche was kind of their more anarchic progenitor, certainly to Freud, um, and then these endless online millennial charts of how to do it is pretty funny. Um, types of it is if the, the human mind always wishes to define to um, alleviate pain I guess alleviate the the f again f they want to civilize the notion of complex love and desire and nature during COVID we saw a battle both against nature and nurture in some aspects culture was there to provide us with bailouts, which ironically were just printing more money, um, mitigation of the public life and little huts on the streets where you froze your butt off having a, a date. And um, under COVID, like in the De De Decameron, we saw a perceived attack on the central projects of modernity, love, individuation, from both culture civilization and nature. So for once, um, the nature-nurture debate within feminism, within masculinism, within um, uh, empiricists, within uh, dogmatists could be mitigated and we saw both nature and nurture coming at us um, with a vengeance. Um, civilization which was supposed to provide the bulwark against this as we saw in the Decameron going up, not just consummating or violating the virginal five women, but sharing stories, narratives, read the internet between the two. Um, during the time of the bubonic plague, which many people redid this Decameron, a central literary document of the West, um, exercising this individuality. Um, complicated, complicated. Look at this. I can't even... This is... A turn off just to understand this. Um, monopoly, no money, friendship, all these little. And then um, oh, using Dungeons and Dragon dice is, oh my God, anything to take the, in order to take the boredom out of uh, serial monogamy, you put it in these uh, boredom and confining features into this these new configurations. Civilization and its discontent the subject of this sort of neo-Freudian view of what a city is, what a cell phone is, what a smartphone is, as siblings, um, 6,000 years apart. 
um, uh, Joseph Stiegler's Globalization and His Discontents, um, this complicated way of making you, it's like the I Ching, allowing um, decisions to be ma maximize or satisficers. I talk about it in a couple other essays. Elu's founds most of her discussion on this, what is um, maximizing choices within modernity. Perhaps Bauman and Ulrich Beck would remain in this, just be ra rational. The satisficing act of, this is good enough, I'm going with it, I'm here and now. Only one life to live this. Um, make good enough deal. Do not ruminate about past decisions. Um, it was an important feature. The blue pill or the red pill um, in the matrix. Um, so, um, marital happiness. Um, all these graphs, these um, model of the self, um, uh, model of the other. Yes, are we secure? Positive, positive. Are we positive and negative? Um, which is dismissing. Are we preoccupied or are we fearful of the other? Other is uh, race, class, gender, whatever is embedded in a civilization. And from the Smith book, 6,000 years of cities, we can see the way she layers like an archaeologist. What The top layer is always present. The bottom is down there somewhere. We can determine it's always been amongst us. Um, moving on, um, more graphs on late dating. You're doing it wrong. Both people um, still on the laptop uh, when they should be enjoying each other. Um, pleasure principle, Freud. Um, the, the 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 implicit um, thanatic aspects of I'm done I'm complete this is it um, I'm it could resemble the satisficing but it could be still a death impulse to say I I'm I'm nothing compared to civilization um, what it's done doing to me how it's crushing me how it suspends my disbelief in terms of uh, neoliberal capitalism what it's done to my sense of indebting my present time. My present time is, my future has been indebted by my present. Um, Non-affordable education, all the entitlements, uh, mortgages, and, and um, managing fees on home ownership when ownership is a very bizarre idea to begin with. Your pensions, which we all know we kind of need in this unsure place, insurances. Um, it's something that um, Beck and Bauman talk a great, great deal about, um, but these things remain um, a problem throughout. Um, it is love, central project, MOK. Um, I hate paying taxes, but I love the civilization that they give me, Oliver Wendell Holmes. Again, suspended gratification. I think that is uh, prosumers in the business, creators, enthusiasts, remixers, customers, the gig economy. Um, so we'll stop here with the gig economy, um, which is forging an economic self in order to forge love. No, if you have love, you don't need anything else. You don't need civilization. You might not need a city. But, as we saw in the Decameron going outside, we saw in COVID, especially in New York, going upstate with your lover, your intimate, your spouse, um, someone you just found, um, that is fraught with um, attention with civilization. We shall continue. See you then.